Due to the problems we had on Saturday and early Sunday morning, people in Detroit aren't trustworthy of the autonomous vehicles. Our data shows a big drop down from Saturday to Monday. Yesterday, hardly anybody used the automated vehicles. They want a human being beyond the wheel. That was Sir Holcomb from the Secretary of State. Going to traffic and weather on the 8's a little early here. There's an accident with a manual vehicle on 15 Mile Road in Ryan. We also have construction on 23 Mile Road between De Quindra and Van Dyke. Weather, it is unusually warm for April with the current temperature at 75 degrees. The low will go down to 55. Thursday, 70 is a high with showers and a low of 50 with light rain. A longer forecast will come up in 10. Right now it's 1.37 p.m. I'm Rod Cambridge. You are listening to WRQ. Cars for kids, K A R S cars for kids, one eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Also on the Breaking news coming into the WRQ newsroom there has been a massive explosion in Freedom Township. The Ventana nuclear power plant is located there, but we are unsure if the plant is responsible for the explosion. Freedom Township is mostly rural with a few industrial buildings around. Freedom Township is also where five years ago, the FBI and other civil authorities distracted zombies to go into a gated control club to save lives. So far, we are not sure if the explosion has come from the power plant. We have an account from someone on Twitter saying the explosion was quite bad. Uh, wait a moment. What's that? A few trusted people saying this is Ventana, for sure. Um, okay. Okay? We now have confirmation that the explosion has come from Ventana Nuclear Power Plant. One can hope this will won't be another version of Chernobyl or Fukushima. If this reporter's college education serves him correctly, most nuclear power plant incidents are rated by the Innes scale. Rating from 0 to 8. WRQ can be heard sometimes in Freedom Township during night time. However by the day, WRQ conflicts with the local conservative station in that area. WRQ works well in on Arbor. Please stay tuned to this emergency message from the emergency alert system. This is a message from the state of Michigan. A confirmed explosion has happened at the Ventana Nuclear Power Plant in Freedom Township, Michigan. Civil authorities in the Washtenaw County area are now urging all persons in the southeastern Michigan area not to enter Freedom Township. If you enter the said radius, you potentially expose a yourself to a high level of radiation. Residents within a 5-mile radius are to move into the basement or the most center part of your home. Please shelter in place and stay in your home. Please close all windows, shut off all air conditioning or air intakes. Also have fresh water and packaged food ready. All residents in the radius, please do not approach the power plant, you might expose yourself to high radiation. If you are within this radius and are driving or outdoors, please get yourself into a strong building right away. Please stay tuned to local media for further updates and further alerts from the emergency alert system. Okay, that was the emergency alert system right there. If you're joining us now, we just had the emergency alert system come on and tell residents within 5 miles of the explosion, just stay indoors. If you are out driving, please get into a building right away. Freedom Township is rural, quite a lot of homes and not too many businesses, if this reporter's memory serves him right. Here at WRQ, 
We do not have any visuals at this time of this explosion. We do have Russ Lindbergh on the chopper. Last time I have checked. Um, yes, he is above Macomb County. I would imagine that the chopper might not be able to go within 5 miles of the plant. And we certainly do not want Russ or any of our staff being exposed to some possible radiation. This accident has happened at 1.45 p.m., perhaps 1.46 p.m. The time now is... Um. 1.51 p.m., so this happened just 5 minutes ago. We have two producers here today in the WRQ newsroom, they are Dora Crandall and our limited capacity producer Sean Haas who's in the other protected room. We are gathering information on what to do with this situation and give more info to folks within the 5 mile radius. One of the possible career moves I was looking at in high school and early college was in power plant operations, but I ultimately decided on journalism in the end. If this reporter's memory serves him correctly. A radius of warning after a power plant reactor explosion would be 10 miles, but things might have changed. Also, as producer Dora Crandall has pointed out, for those looking for a shelter, you would need to do the following. To find the nearest open shelter in your area, text SHELTER plus your zip code to 433624FEMA. Freedom Township zip code is 48118. So please text SHELTER in 4811824-3362. Again, SHELTER 4811824-3362. Ventana Power Plant is in the southwest area of Freedom Township, so this radius draws into other townships, Bridgewater Township, Manchester Township and also Sharon Township. From what Dora Crandall is pointing out, this 5-mile radius goes into the city of Manchester. For those in the city, or actually, it says Village of Manchester, please do as the emergency alert system says. Since this incident has happened within 10 minutes, we are still unsure. Again, this is the 5 mile radius within the plant. If you are in Wayne, Macomb, Oakland, Livingston, St. Clair, no action is necessary at this time. Now, if your power is still on, it is possible that your power might go out from time to time. According to the outage map, there are quite a few power outages around the 5 mile radius and a few beyond that. There is little power outages to report in On Arbor, the major city nearest to the plant. There are also some concerns with zombie control facilities in the area, there is one in the northwest corner of Jackson County, the county west of Washtenaw. This facility is not within the radius memo has told us about. Washtenaw County Sheriffs have made roadblocks within that 5 mile radius and quite a few of those folks in blue are wearing gas masks. Again, for those who are listening to us within the 5 mile radius, stay inside your homes, close all windows and shut off the AC, until told otherwise. Also, do not go into this area at this time. We have seen a few live feeds via Facebook, Twitter and Ding Dong with folks attempting to get in the area. Russ Lindbergh is on Chopper 800 but has been ordered not to fly within 5 miles within the radius. We also have Debbie Auden heading to the area by the radius line. Russ audio is not working at this time, but he says from his binoculars, he sees a hole that has blasted through the west side of the plant. WRQ reaches throughout most of the southeastern Michigan area and beyond. We do have some troubles in Jackson County due to an M station on the 840M dial. And. We are about to receive an EIS alert I have been told, so stand by for the message. This is an administrative message from the Michigan Emergency Management Office or MEMO, along with the Michigan State Police. The Michigan State Police are putting out an all-points bulletin on 49-year-old David Gardner. Gardner is 5 foot 11 inches and 275 pounds. He has blonde hair. David Gardner is believed to leave the Ventana Power Plant facility just within five minutes of the explosion. It is said that Gardner might be heading to Macomb County. His recent photo and other information will be located on the Michigan State Police website. 
Do not approach David Gardner, he is believed to be armed and dangerous. He also could be contaminated with radiation. Memo is still urging residents within a five-mile radius to stay inside their homes and shelter in place. Hazmat crews and radiation experts are currently in the said area at this time to test radiation levels. Residents in this area are advised to shelter in place and keep fresh food and water for up to 72 hours. All residents within a 15-mile radius of this incident, this includes Ann Arbor, are asked to stay tuned to local media or emergency alerts on your smartphone for further updates. This concludes this message from the emergency alert system. Okay, looks like we are back on the air. The ES alert stated that the Michigan State Police are searching for 49-year-old David Gardner. The alert did not say why he is wanted. This could be a pretty scary deal if Gardner left just shortly after the explosion, because he could be bringing the radiation along with him. Memo is still keeping its shelter-in-place radius at 5 miles. When the Fukushima evacuation, they evacuated people up to 19 miles from that incident. So far, Memo hasn't stated anything about evacuations. According to our traffic data, there is heavy traffic on eastbound I-94 leaving Ann Arbor. We are seeing backups on M-17 and M-14 going east. We are not seeing much traffic heading north on US-23. The Ventana Power Plant is out in the middle of nowhere. The closest major roads are US-12 and M-52. We are seeing on Twitter that a hashtag of leaving Guy and Arbor is quite hot in the Twitter sphere. Our able-bodied producer Dora Crandall is seeing some videos of folks stuck in traffic. This looks like M-14 to me here. We are also seeing some serious trolling here too. Quite a few right-wing posts degrading the city of Ann Arbor. If you are looking to leave Ann Arbor, we are seeing less traffic going north on US-23. We don't see a lot of traffic heading south. We are also getting word that Jackson County will also be sending hazmat crews to the site. Ventana Power Plant, again, is laid on Washtenaw County in the southwest region. Jackson County is not so far from them. We also have received word that the American Red Cross is looking to set up shop at Michigan Stadium. That has not been officially been said yet. We will keep you updated on what the American Red Cross... WTOW, Conservative Talk Radio serving Ann Arbor. Here is the news. This is Josh Skillington for WTOW. Memo has given its 5 mile radius order. That radius does not include the city of Chelsea. However, at this time, please pack a bag or two just in case one needs to evacuate because that might just happen. This station is located 2 miles south of Chelsea off of M52. With that incident that has happened today, we won't be broadcasting the Diana Claus show. What we will be doing is continuing to, continuing to give updates of the situation. And now, I'm receiving word that the emergency alert system will broadcast a message, so stand by. This is an administrative message from the Michigan Emergency Management Office or MEMO. MEMO has extended its shelter-in-place radius to 15 miles. This includes the western part of the city of Ann Arbor and its downtown area. This also includes Pittsfield Township, Saline, Bridgewater, Benton, Manchester, Sharon Hollow, Lima Center, Chelsea and Dexter. Students attending the University of Michigan's main campus should also shelter in place. For residents within the radius, please close all windows and doors, also shut off air conditioners. Reports so far indicate that the radiation levels from the original, proposed 5-mile radius to the 15-mile radius, are strong enough to cause injuries and other potential problems. For those within that 5-15-mile to 15 mile radius, please do not leave your home or shelter at this time. You could potentially put yourself at risk. Be sure to have fresh sealed food and fresh water. This shelter-in-place order could last 72 hours. Please stay tuned to local media for further updates.
That was the emergency alert system telling us the great news that the radius has been extended to a 15 mile radius. That includes Chelsea and also the station. Looks like I'm going to be here by myself due to the intern leaving as he heard the EAS alert. We are going to continue on with updates and when I need to take a break to gather information, I'll put some music on. Better do that now and get a couple of beers. Why in the hell would he just extend the radius to 15 miles just like that? I'm not sure, but then again, we have a Democrat running the station. This is Josh Skillington. I'll be back in a minute. You are listening to WTOW, the conservative voice of Ann Arbor. Again, that radius includes the western part of Ann Arbor. That is where the Michigan main campus is located. I also have been informed that all officers under the Jackson County Sheriff's Department should report to the main headquarters. Our signal is usually not that strong there in Jackson, but if I'm not mistaken, I am 1516 Jackson is carrying us right now, is that true? Yes, that is. We also have no word on what they are planning to do at the prison over there in Jackson. The Brian Hoskins Maximum Security Correctional Facility is located west of Jackson but is not within the 15-mile radius. No reports of any incidents at this time. The 15-mile radius of this explosion does reach into a portion of the eastern side of Jackson County. We are still waiting for Governor Zayd al-Rahmani to take the podium here, we will go to him when he gets to the podium. If you are watching Macomb County TV, which our station is played in the background, they should be showing a map of the affected area. Again, Macomb County residents do not need to take action right now. The whereabouts of David Gardner are still unknown at this time. We have unconfirmed information that his privately owned vehicle is still at the parking lot. The explosion has caused some damage to vehicles in that parking lot. Other news coming in, about 10 minutes ago, folks affiliated with the Tri-County Hazmat crew, being Wayne, Michael and Oakland County, were called in to assist with this planned incident. There are some tweets on Twitter from two people claiming to be employees of Ventana Nuclear Power Plant saying that Reactor 1 was the one that exploded and the two other reactors are in poor shape. Again, this is just info on Twitter that has not been confirmed, and we are now seeing that Governor Zayd al-Rahman is taking the podium, let's listen. Good afternoon. At 1.44 p.m., a reactor explosion happened at Vantana Nuclear Power Plant in Freedom Township. This was due to an employee interfering with the water levels of this reactor. At what time he started to do this is unknown. How other staff did not spot this before the incident is also unknown. As Memo has requested, we are asking all residents within a 15-mile radius to stay indoors at this time. Close all windows and shut off the AC. Yes, this is a little inconvenient. We have hazmat crews within the area taking tests on the radiation levels. The last reports that radiation levels within the 5 mile radius are extremely high at this time. Within the 5 to 15 mile level mark, we are reporting some medium levels of radiation. But those levels are not something I would be comfortable with by saying all clear. At this time, I'm asking those residents to stay put. We also know that there are some power routages and flickering power issues within a 30 mile radius of Ventana. We have other power plants within a 200 mile radius adding additional power to the grid. We also want to emphasize that we do not want anybody or media attempting to go through the barricades. We have police barricades within the 5 mile radius. We have had a couple reports of people representing in fortresses breaching the barricades while broadcasting live, claiming this is a hoax. I really wish I could say this is a hoax, but it's not. Understandably, people have high election anxiety. However, this kind of behavior makes this situation worse. As of right now, we have a IVAC center located in Ann Arbor Township and in the government building in Delhi Mills. People evacuating can go there. The American Red Cross is also there. We are looking to open Michigan Stadium as a shelter once we can confidently announce Ann Arbor is safe. 
please do not go to Michigan Stadium at this time. I also have received news that David Gardner has taken a company truck as his getaway vehicle. He is driving a white 2021 Ford F-150 truck with text on both doors saying Ventana Nuclear Power Plant. The license plate number is I4X07. Again, I4X07. David Gardner is considered armed and dangerous. He also was in the plant during the explosion, he also could be contaminated. David Gardner, if you're listening to me, I urge you to turn yourself in immediately. Please call whatever county or city law enforcement and confess. While you're out there and under run, you can get others sick. David Gardner, please do the right thing. I won't be taking any questions and I will pull another press conference soon. Breaking news coming into the WRQ newsroom we have indications of a shooting at a McDonald's drive through in Madison Heights. Witnesses say the person who has caused the shooting fits the description of David Gardner, along with the vehicle he was driving. We have no further details at this time. I'm being told now that the license plate in question is a E 4 X 0 7 not A 4 X 0 7. And that's 0 as in number 0. I suppose that is a mistake on the governor's part, and perhaps he got the wrong info. Governor Al Rahmani has urged David Gardner to turn himself in but not before contacting authorities. Again, if you see David Gardner, do not approach, not only he is armed, he is also dangerous as he might be contaminated. Quite a few hospitals within a 30 mile radius of the incident have been filled beyond capacity. Shrine Memorial Hospital in Saline is dealing with a partial power outage. It has been reported that two people on ventilators depending on power have died. There are reports of the Delhi Mills shelter going over capacity at this time. The American Red Cross is looking for... All Weather Network, sponsored by Snapper Lawn Mowers. That's what's going on in Oakland County at this moment. Dr. Stephen Falcon Jr. says a nuclear plant incident could possibly make the 15-mile radius permanently uninhabitable. This also includes some of the city of Ann Arbor. Dr. Stephen Falcon Jr. is an outspoken critic on Twitter. He teaches physics at Eastern Michigan. Breaking news coming in from the city of St. Clair Shores. There is a truck parked in the middle of the intersection of 10 Mile and Harper Roads, and is surrounded by authorities. This truck is similar to the description of the truck in question. 
We are going to go to Russ Lindbergh at Chopper 800. Russ, what can you tell us? With my pair of binoculars, I can see the tech saying Ventana nuclear power plant. This was just a minute ago. We have been ordered to move a little further away from the area. I won't have the good view no more. Were you able to see the person inside the truck? I wasn't able to see inside the truck from my position. Is it just St. Clair Shores cops? Since St. Clair Shores is in Macomb County, are you seeing Macomb County Sheriff's officers there as well? I'm seeing a Macomb County cop car there, and also an authority figure wearing a suit. Besides that, all I can see is St. Clair Shores cops. Okay, Russ. To our listeners here at WRQ, we are getting word that another alert from the emergency alert system is coming up. Please stand by for the message. This is a message from the Emergency Alert System. This message includes the participation from the Michigan Emergency Management Office or MEMO, and also the Michigan State Police. The 10 to 15 mile radius radiation levels are lower than damaging levels. Residents of that area, this includes all of Ann Arbor, Chelsea, Saline, Pittsfield Township and Napoleon are allowed to leave their homes at this time. Residents within the now less affected area are to stand by for possible evacuation. Evacuation for these residents is by choice at this time. Residents who wish to leave the area can do so in an orderly fashion. Warning, this area can go back to stay-at-home orders depending on wind and weather. Memo has set up a shelter at Michigan Stadium with the help of the American Red Cross. The shelter at Delhi Mills is at full capacity. Two more shelters are currently in the process to be available in Ypsilanti and Friend Lake. This additional info is for residents of the city of St. Clair Shores. Residents within a mile from the Harper Avenue and 10 Mile Road intersection are to stay in their homes at this time. Suspect David Gardner is in this area blocking the intersection. As a precaution to all residents, please stay inside your home. Do not approach this area. And that is your update. If you are in Saline, Chelsea, or that liberal crap hole Ann Arbor, you could exit your house. And if you are in Ann Arbor, I don't blame you for leaving. Now, I'm gonna take a drink. Now, according to Dr. Stephen Falcon Jr., it is a great possibility that Ann Arbor and all that's within a 15 mile radius might be uninhabitable. Well, I gotta tell you something, I'm happy as hell if this is true, because my God-fearing Republican self hates Ann Arbor, and also, I hate this damn station and its owners. The pay sucks here, and I gotta get a second job and also do DoorDash to make ends meet. Grandfather's Media, you suck. I killed the damn demon when it walked into my station when the country was dealing with that supernatural threat, and this station pays me worse than this station at Mount Carmel. So if Ann Arbor becomes permanently uninhabitable, and so will this station. And with that being said, Grand Foster's Media, kiss my ass. I'm going to finish this drink and I'm out of here. And I'll say it again. Grand Foster's Media, kiss my hillbilly ass. I'm out of here. Traffic reports coming from the affected area, both lanes on US Highway 12 are at a standstill with both lanes. People are trying to go eastbound on both of those lanes, and there are a couple of accidents on the westbound side. We do not have a chopper over there, we still have our chopper in Macomb County. Also, for those watching the All Weather Network in On Arbor, you'll be seeing on the local forecast that they can't get a temperature reading for some of the affected areas. Currently in On Arbor, 67 degrees and sunny. We cannot get a reading in Chelsea or Saline at this moment. It's 70 here at WRQ with partly cloudy skies. And we have breaking news. Breaking news coming into the WRQ newsroom, a gunshot has been reported at the scene in St. Clair Shores. We are going to Russ Lindbergh, who is above the scene on Chopper 800. 
Russ, what can you tell us? There is some movement towards the truck at this time. I see about four SWAT officers slowly moving to the car. And, uh oh, okay, they have opened the door and the body had limped out. Looks like a handgun dropped out of the vehicle as well. It appears that the person is indeed David Gardner. So this appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot? Are there other officers besides St. Clair children? Okay, it looks like we have a brownout here at WRQ. We do have a backup system here. I'm not sure if it's working properly. Somebody is checking it. Power outages are part of the problem here. We can't get to Russ while we are on this limited broadcasting capability here. If you've just joined us now, we have reported that a gunshot was heard around the proximity of the standoff at 10 Mile and Harper. David Gardner is dead. It is unknown if he may have turned the gun on himself or that shot was from authorities. Russ cannot confirm this. Despite our brownout, we will continue to hunt for that information. While Russ was finishing his word there and I began to talk, we started seeing some lights flickering and our TVs going off as well. Suddenly, we saw the on-air light go off and the light in the hallway shut off. One light is working here in the studio. We also want to. This is an administrative message from the Michigan Emergency Management Office or memo. This is a message for St. Clair Shores residents, all clear. Residents of St. Clair Shores can now leave their homes or shelters. It is confirmed that there were no serious threats inside the vehicle and suspect David Gardner was killed by police. People are highly advised not to enter the area of 10 Mile Road in Hopper. More information of the Ventana nuclear power plant incident will occur in further alerts. This concludes this message from the emergency alert system. That was the emergency alert system telling us St. Clair Shores residents can leave their homes. However, please stay away from 10 Mile and Harper Avenue. Please allow authorities to do what they need to do. We also have some news coming in from Representative Maxine Holmes. She says one of her nephews named Keith Redman was at Ventana Nuclear Power Plant when the explosion occurred. She cannot get a hold of him. Representative Holmes has been representing the southern portion of Macomb County for six terms and is a heavy critic of former President Donald Trump. Speaking of former President Trump, Mr. Trump has been tweeting heavily on the situation and being critical on his successor, President Samantha Brock and our Governor Zayd al-Rahmani. Trump will later appear in court next month for his exposure of top-secret information in the 2020 alien attack. Trump tweeted classified information during the attacks. Also in the realm of Twitter and aliens, there is a non-confirmed account said to be belonging to David Gardner that is receiving a lot of attention. In this account, there are some outrageous claims, with the person possibly Gardner claiming that his parents were eaten alive by aliens while he was 10 years old. Again. This is not a confirmed account but intelligence professor at the University of Hawaii named Janet Golden says this is his official account. She was interviewed by phone earlier at CBS Los Angeles. With our intelligence at the university, we can confirm this account belongs to David Gardner. His parents died under mysterious circumstances when he was 10 years old. Authorities say the two were poisoned. He also made previous references of his employment at Ventana Nuclear Power Plant. That was Janet Golden, who previously was in the FBI in Detroit. David Gardner grew up in the northern suburb of Los Angeles. We still haven't confirmed any details of his family life. President Samantha Brock was in Anderson, Indiana at the time of the incident. She made a speech later with half of it discussing the incident. President Brock is on her way to the White House and is said to be scheduling an address. We are unsure about the exact time at this moment. 
breaking news coming into the WRQ newsroom, there is a report that WTOW's program director Josh Skillington has been shot and killed by police while breaching a barricade in Freedom Township. There is a live Facebook feed from Skillington where he is noticeably intoxicated and breaking a barricade with his truck. Verbal warnings from a megaphone are heard before he reached the barricade. The video is quite graphic and discretion is advised when watching it. Shortly before the breach, Skillington had given props to InfoTraces, a conspiracy theory show led by Alex Johnson. WTOW is a conservative talk radio station and is based in Chelsea. WTOW is owned by Grand Foster's Media. Josh Skillington became well known during the 2021 supernatural crisis when he shot and killed a demon that entered the radio station where he was broadcasting, giving him the name The Demon Killer. Skillington has worked in conservative stations in a spanning career and has appeared in Fox News as a contributor. Josh Skillington was 55 years old. We are still awaiting for another possible news briefing from the head of Memo, Rebecca Henley. This is an alert from the Michigan Emergency Management Office or memo. The following message is for the residents of the 10-mile radius within the power plant explosion, the following cities of Manchester, Bridgewater, Sylvan Township, Freedom Township, Sharon Hollow, Benton and Saline. Four hazmat tents are currently being set up beyond this radius. Special transportation also being set up for these residents to be taken to these areas. Residents will be needing to put identification and other small items in plastic sealable bags. Also include two sets of clothes. Residents in this area will be receiving a phone call from a phone number with a 734 area code within four hours. The EAS will alert residents again in four more hours with a phone number for residents to call in case they didn't receive the call. We urge all residents to comply to these measures to lower the possibility of contamination. We also urge residents not to leave their homes or shelters until they have received this phone call or the four hours have passed. Please stay tuned to local media for further updates and alerts from the emergency alert system. This is an administrative alert from the Michigan Emergency Management Office or memo. This message is for residents of the town of Manchester. You will hear police or ambulance sirens along with police alerting residents via speaker to leave their homes. Civil authorities and National Guard will be traveling on every block and side street to ensure all people will evacuate the town. Civil authorities will arrive to your door or shelter. Please have the number of persons in your home or shelter readily available as civil authorities need to make a precise count of people inside the buses. Next to be transferred to Tate Park west of the town of Clinton. Persons going to this hazmat tent in Tate Park will be subject to the decontamination process. Please stay tuned to local media for further information. We are about to go all live with President Samantha Brock at the White House. My fellow Americans, at approximately 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, a very serious incident happened at Fantana Nuclear Power Plant in Freedom Township, Michigan. Over 50 miles west from Detroit, and about 14 miles from the city of Ann Arbor. We have sent federal government officers and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to investigate this matter and also to save as much lives as we can. Nuclear disasters at this level are highly uncommon. We had Chernobyl in 1986, we had Fukushima in 2011, we had Three Mile Island in 1979, and now in 2024, we have Ventana. Nuclear power is a great and clean energy source. But when not being carefully monitored, 
deadly disasters can happen. The person responsible for this has died, we may never know the reason why he did this. For one thing, we have to make sure this doesn't ever happen again. Within the five-mile radius of this incident, the state of Michigan is currently utilizing a carefully coordinated plan to get residents out of that area. It pains me to say this, but this five-mile radius may be permanently uninhabitable. Let's hope that's not the case. I'm working with Governor Al Rimani, as he is sending Michigan National Guard to the area to assist, and we will be helpful with this horrific situation. I'm sorry, but I'm not taking any questions right now. Thank you. Okay, that was President Samantha Brock with the first of I'd imagine many addresses she'll be giving within the next 72 hours. She said that federal officials are working with the state of Michigan. She also confirmed the evacuation process that is happening within a five-mile radius and beyond of the Ventana nuclear power plant. We also have some breaking news that came up during the president's speech. A document found in an Anaheim City website shows that the parents of David Gardner had both died due to food poisoning as it says here. Both parents Dr. George and Ellen Gardner had both died on the same day. Gardner was later adopted by a nurse named Linda Magnuson. The two later moved to Michigan in the 90s, the exact year is not known as of now. Magnuson, while working as a nurse, transitioned into a zombie during the 2019 Detroit zombie tragedy and was later shot to death by police when they took over St. Josephine Hospital in Clinton Township. David Gardner had graduated Central Michigan University in 1997. His late father, Dr. George Gardner, was a scientist for NASA. WRQ time is 7.08, we are going to do a quick traffic and weather. This is an administrative alert from the Michigan Emergency Management Office or memo. This message is for residents of the Township of Freedom. You will hear police or ambulance sirens along with police alerting residents via speaker to leave their homes. Civil authorities will be traveling on every road and side street to ensure all people will evacuate the township. Civil authorities will arrive to your door or shelter. Please have the number of persons in your home or shelter readily available as civil authorities need to make a precise count of people inside the buses. These persons will be transferred to Dexter Church of Jesus Christ in the town of Dexter. Persons going to this hazmat tent at this location will be subject to the decontamination process. This next message is for the residents in the evacuation areas that haven't left the area. Please call the following number, 734-555-2868. The number again is 734-555-2868. It is highly recommended that you call and arrange a transport to a station. If unable to do so, please put on any protective gear and move to a police barricade or to a decontamination station. This concludes this alert from the emergency alert system. That was Tessie Greenberg, who is from Celine. Her and her four children are here. And if you're just joining us, you are listening to WRQ. I'm Willie Barman, and I'm at Michigan Stadium, which has now turned into an evacuation post. Okay, we are going to this gentleman here. Um, sir, where did you come from? I came from Celine. Oh, okay, not too far from the incident. How did you hear about the news of the incident? I heard something like an explosion, but it was faint. Then a neighbor told me. Did you evacuate right away when hearing the news? Within 20 minutes, I did. I went to Delhi Mills for a while and next to get transferred here due to the possible contamination. Where's your microphone? Well, at WRQ, we are having some audio troubles, and this is how we are doing 
the interviews until the troubles have been solved. I had to move my old ass out of sailing at a short moment's notice. My wife died almost three years ago due to that supernatural crisis. I have cancer and this explosion could make it worse. Then I got you shoving that phone in my face. You news people aren't making it easy. Okay, I apologize, get sir. I'm very sorry to hear that. Obviously, there are some folks here who are angry about this devastating situation. Uh, Willie, we have our microphone working now. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. If you're just joining us now, we've had some troubles with our microphone here at WRQ. I think we are okay now. This is Debbie Auden. We will be going to Peter Handley who is in Saline, by the police barricade at U.S. Highway 12. Um, Peter, last time we spoke. This is an administrative alert from the state of Michigan. Scientists have made assessments of the 15 mile radius. Scientists state that the 10 to 15 mile radius is at a minimum level and should not cause any trouble with residents living in those areas. This includes the city of Ann Arbor. However, this can change at a later time. For residents in this area who wish to leave, temporary living arrangements can't be made with FEMA. Nuclear accidents are measured by the International Nuclear Event Scale or INES, although this isn't the final conclusion, scientists predict that from a scale of 0 to 7, the Ventana incident will measure at a 7. The 2011 Fukushima plant incident also measured at a 7. The state of Michigan now announces that the following areas are now off limits for civilians until further notice, Manchester, Sharon Hollow, Bridgewater, Sylvan Township and Freedom Township. There are reports of dead animals in the area. Persons in that area without the proper personal protection equipment could be subject to high radiation levels that can cause cancer and other long-term health effects. The cities of Saline and Chelsea are not under any danger at this time. However, for residents of Chelsea, do not travel south on Michigan Highway 52. For residents of Saline, do not travel west on U.S. Highway 12. Civil authorities have roadblocks in those areas. Governor Al Rahmani will issue updates in the next coming hours of the situation at hand. This concludes this alert from the emergency alert system. You are listening to WTOW on April 25, 2024 at 2 a.m. Today, we had a terrible situation and the tragic passing of the station's program director. The new government-issued order doesn't allow residents within the 10-mile radius of the power plant explosion. This sadly includes this very radio station. 
WTOW has been committed to bringing you the absolute best of conservative talk radio since 1997. With greats such as Glenn Beck and Savage Nation. We also committed to religious talk on Sundays with Rev. Don Jeffrey and formerly the late Rev. Paul Haney. Due to this executive order by a Democratic governor and also due to the FCC which is mainly ran by Democrats, we cannot have any personnel present at the station. Grand Foster's Media, the company that owns a majority stake in the station, has chose not to support us with the situation. The decision comes from the CEO Diane Grandley, who voted for President Sam Brock. With no one present in the building, we cannot broadcast at normal capacity, this includes our syndications. With that being said, we will begin an automated countdown starting with 99,999. By the time it reaches to one we hope to be back at full capacity, or sooner. I want 